some of you beautiful people will know, I used to upload videos under the name Board Gamer. A terrible and boring name, as I've admitted to already. It was only ever meant to be a placeholder, really. Something to work for me in my earlier days. I then moved to Fantasy Victors and out of Ronica Reviews, but occasionally I think back to the awkward little weirdo and the videos I used to make. They were kind of shit. One of the videos I did was about a game called Generation Zero, which at the time I vaguely remember thinking was like if Fallout 76 was somehow less interesting. I say vaguely because I haven't watched the video and I don't really remember the specifics of its contents. Aside from it being one of the few videos in which I could be asked to set up the green screen and show you my lovely face, what I do remember is the reception of the video. It wasn't well liked. I had a bit of a chuckle at one or two of the comments and then moved on. But I was eating my morning biscuits the other day and decided to have another look back, specifically at two of the comments that stood out to me. This one that says my hair is greasy is a fair criticism, really. And this one that says what a misinformed BS review it was. Now, I don't know where they got the idea that the review was misinformed. I played the game and I gave my... My review was based on the experience I had with it. That's how I do reviews. Maybe it's because I didn't get too far into the game. I got about eight, I think about eight hours into it. I can't remember exactly. But I do remember that in that time, I was bored and just not having a good time. So my review was informed by the experience I had. So I don't really get what this comment means, to be perfectly honest with you. However, I couldn't get my regular voice actors this week for the script I'd already written. So I needed something else to quickly bang out. And this seemed like a good idea. I thought I'd go back and have another look at it now and see if my opinion changes on it. See if I can have a good time with it this time. You never know. Perhaps. I will be better disposed towards it this time around. After all, if Demon Souls managed to hook me after a period of initial dismissal on my part, perhaps it is possible for any other games to go through the same process. I mean, it's not a great process for games to go through, but it's better late than never to realise you like something, unless what you enjoyed was the big ribbon you discovered that too late. I also decided not to watch my original review to avoid colouring my current opinion, and so that I could view the game through a much fresher lens. So was the game actually good back then, and in my sleep-deprived state I somehow managed to miss that because I was a miserable fuck with no taste? Or is the game a boring load of pig wank and the comments were more the result of the salty fanboys I offended who apparently exist for this game? Well, we're gonna find out. Generation Zero takes place around World War II in Sweden, only the country is overrun by killer robots. You play as a teenager who was lost at sea for a couple of days and returns home to find that all the people are gone and the robots are running amok. Thankfully, this version of Sweden got its people really into firearms, so we have to quickly find a gun and junk one of the robots before setting off on a quest to figure out where everyone is. I played the game at launch and found it to be lacklustre. Ammo was scarce, weapons too, robots were far too common and aggressive, and there was fuck all for us to do in the game. I remember that experience well enough, I'm good at remembering the state games launch in, aren't I, Fallout? 76. I've never let that one go. So, how about now? Well, I already found enough ammo to build a small house with, and in about 40 minutes I had a pistol, shotgun, sniper rifle, and a machine gun. Nice to see that the developers realised that the game was too stingy and that players might like to have fun playing the video game, though that being a realisation they had after the fact is what worries me. But more to the point, it's nice to know that I can walk more than 30 feet before being ambushed by robots and having to take down like 7 of them with a total of 3 bullets and a broken baseball bat. Though it seems enemies in the early section of the game do still appear in significant numbers, and whilst the starting bot isn't the toughest thing, it is one of the most annoying enemies. It's combining two of gaming's worst types of enemy, dogs and turrets. It does have a noticeable weak spot on the back. If you shoot it, it blows up and the robot goes bye-bye. Even a basic pistol bullet will do the job, and if other robots are near it when it explodes, they get explodey too. Yay. Only issue is, it runs around like a fucking lunatic, and I can't tell if some of these patterns are intentional or if the AI is just fucking up. I say this because the game isn't the most well put together to begin with. Plenty of models will clip into each other, and considering sometimes enemy robots will just teleport to new positions, assuming they're pathfinding is messed up is only fair on my part, I believe. Combat can get kind of stressful. These dog bots are never alone, usually travelling in groups of at least two or more. And not long into the game, they're joined by these armoured upgraded dogs with slug shooting shotguns that take off a third of your health with every hit. And these dog bots like to run at you and just sort of hit you in the face. The game suggests sneaking and sometimes just running away from combat if it's too tough. Considering these giant robot dudes appear pretty early on and they have massive machine guns and artillery, you are just going to have to leg it from time to time. And the game is nice enough to reward you with some XP for running away successfully, but my the issue with both of these systems, the running away and the stealth system, is that they're pretty unreliable. I had enemies spot me through walls more than once while sneaking, but then often when I'm standing upright next to them, they won't even register that I'm in the area. So it's anyone's guess if the stealth works consistently, and some enemies have such an immense range on them that running away is just not feasible even when the game thinks that it is. Winning combat does get you XP as well, so if you get spotted and you can take out most of the enemies, you might as well go for it. Ammo is plentiful, and if you're a good shot, you'll be fine. 
I mean, I'm not a good shot and I was fine, so yeah. Using XP, you could level up and get skill upgrades. It's not much worth mentioning. They're all fairly standard, like reloading faster, run for longer, earn a little bit more XP, the usual affairs. In fact, this attitude of it's all fairly standard fits the game to a T. It is all standard. I've seen plenty of open world video games, and when I looked through my B-roll folder, I saw footage from Generation Zero and I was like, huh, what is this, Far Cry or something? At least until I saw the robots, because up until you see them, the game has nothing about it that stands out. I was exploring an empty wilderness, then some copy-pasted houses, then more empty wilderness, with the most interesting thing I found being some basic crafting resources you find in any game. Generation Zero just really struggles to have an identity of its own. It has the killer robot, sure, but that's hardly a unique selling point. Plenty of games have killer robots. It has a stealth system and audio logs, but I find it weirder when an open world game doesn't have these in this day and age. When I googled the game earlier, one of the questions I saw asked about the game was, is Generation Zero good yet? And it would have made me laugh if it wasn't a valid question to ask. The game's launch state was dire in terms of content, but at least it was functional for the most part, if memory serves anyway. Then I went back to it and apparently had a boring time. Now we're here again and I'm still kind of bored. Enemies can get challenging, I'm not saying they can't and sometimes a hike across the island could be quite pleasant. But only until I make it to the next copy-pasted house with the identical furniture and the plants clipping through the walls, that's when it all comes crashing down. The game does have multiplayer, I tried to get into it a few times but got nothing. Zilch. And I'm not about to try and convince any of my friends to buy this. You don't need other players though, it's very much playable solo and that's good. The sense of isolation did work to serve the game up to a certain point. It made it tense to wander around at first before I had all my weapons, never knowing if a bot was around the next corner. But after only a couple of hours I had two machine guns an armoured coat and more pistol ammo than even an American police officer would carry. The worst I'll encounter is a big bot with artillery, but I'll get rewards if I just run away, so why wouldn't I? What should cleverly be training you to avoid tough encounters just teaches you that you can get through the game by not playing bits of it. As I said, sure, some robots have long range weapons that can make it harder to get away from them, but just like any video game baddie, they get bored easily enough and they will leave you alone after a while. Beep boop, fuck it, they have gone too far, beep boop. The game also subscribes to some irritating design philosophies. I mentioned copy-pasted assets and now I shall again. I get that bunkers might all look very similar, but when you have five of the same room in one bunker, right down to the playing cards laid out on the table, you've got to wonder how much of a shit was given. One bunker had the same very noticeable room full of pipes used twice, the only difference was an interactable switch that wasn't in the second room. As the first room was covered in gas, I've got to assume that the devs just kind of hoped we wouldn't notice. Leaving the bunkers, we see that there's like a grand total of three house models, all with nearly identical interiors. It wouldn't have been so bad if the furniture variety wasn't as limited as it is. So much of it all just looks the same. I explored dozens of homes, but if you ask me to highlight any of them, I'll just laugh and walk away because I can't. They all look so similar. The next annoyance is the fast travel system. You can only fast travel between safe houses, and some of these could be miles apart from each other. If you have to disengage from your exploring to go back and store some of your stuff, you might find yourself in a worse position for it. You could be left 90 miles away from the nearest objective. And let's not forget that you can't fast travel if you're over encumbered because you have a weight limit in this game. Though I'll admit the weight limit isn't too bad when you're realise that 99% of the items you pick up are fairly useless. I mean, sure I could do something cool with the EMP things and the gas tanks I keep finding, but I never bothered and I still did pretty well. But even if I did want to use them, I'd have to either fumble with an item select wheel that barely works, or stop dead, open the menu and locate them that way. A streamlined experience this ain't. But if I'm being honest with you, the biggest problem I saw in the game was that it was just boring to play. There's a nice big world, but fuck all to do. You shoot at strokes, sneak around robots, and that's kind of it. As everything the game has to offer looks the fucking same, it's no fun to explore because you won't find anything. The most unique asset I saw was a crumbling castle was kinda cool, but I bet money they probably used it elsewhere in the map. Look, I don't mind assets being reused, I've been critical of that in the past, but I don't actually mind it. Big open world games are a trial to make, for certain, and sometimes you gotta cut corners. One of my favourite games of all times, Fallout New Vegas is guilty of this, but you know what? The devs remembered to also put interesting shit into the game. Some of the house models in that game were used a lot, but because you'd usually find some nice treasure in there, or an interesting interesting character or just something in there, it didn't matter too much. And even though the houses had the same basic layout and furniture items, there was still something distinct about each of them. In Generation Zero, if I ever saw a house, I'd be like, hmm, never place to find ammo and health kits, I guess. And it doesn't take too long before you've got more of both than you can carry. One of the things that really bothers me is the lack of characters, it's just no one to meet, at least not in the five to six hours I played this time, and last time it was about eight hours, I've still met no one. 
just robots and audio logs. It's just not fun for me wandering around a bland open world looking for the next audio diary or random file. I don't really know what vision the devs had in mind when they made this game. Were they aiming for a survival game? That one's out the window immediately because it's got no survival elements. Is it maybe a narrative driven experience? Possibly, but it didn't take me long before I was just wandering towards objective markers without any clue as to why I was doing it. I don't engage well when I can't see the characters when they don't functionally exist in the game, they're just a voice on an audio log. I guess all we're left with is an open world first person shooter with RPG elements. I couldn't call it an FPS SRPG because it's too lacking in the latter's department. I suppose I could praise the gunplay real quick. Weapons felt appropriately weighty, they had good sound effects, they had decent designs. Some of them you could swap between automatic and semi-automatic on the fly, they had different ammo types, plenty of mods to install, but this doesn't really make the game great, it doesn't even make the game good. It just sits here and shows us that the developers do like attention to detail, you know, when it suits them. So what are we really left with here? A shitty, boring open world shooter. Now I can quickly check my previous review to see if it all lines up. Please stand by. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I was kind of hoping that in over a year that the game would have experienced some significant development. Nope, some quality of life changes here and there, but I'm still bored out of my sexy skull. So Generation Zero, still a wash as far as I'm concerned. But now I'm gonna say something along the lines of what I said back in my Borderlands 2 review. If you like this game, good. I'm glad you enjoy it. I am happy that it does something that you enjoy, so feel free to keep playing and loving it. It doesn't matter to me. My opinion of the game is that it's shit and boring. I don't like it, and I think I've given it more than a fair shake by this point. It's had plenty of chances to prove to me that it was a fun and exciting video game, and it has constantly failed. It's not for me, and I won't be recommending it to anyone because I don't know anyone who would probably like it. But again, if you like it, then cool. Good for you, I'm glad you're getting your money's worth. I simply wasn't. And that will do. That's the last time I'll ever have to look at or think about this game. I can erase it from my hard drive now once and for all and just be done with it. I can only hope this review is now up to the standards of the fans that I pissed off. I'm still surprised this game has fans. And I'm not saying that to be a dick, I'm just genuinely surprised something this bland has anyone who actually cares about it that much. This is based, as I said earlier, on the experience that I had playing the game and I had a bit of a shit experience. It was boring. I didn't feel like I was building towards anything. I was just wandering around and there were robots. Okay, fair enough, I guess that's a video game. Not a very good video game, but it's a video game. But you know what, it doesn't matter because I'm done. I'm done with Generation Zero. I can walk away now, I tried, I really tried to like it this time, but it didn't, it just wasn't working for me. I think it's shit, and I'm done with it. <laughs>